Hello children. In today's session, I will just explain the characters of the next class in vertebrata. Name of the class is Amphibia. In previous session, I have completed Pisces with two groups, Chondrichthys, Ostrichthys. Class Amphibia includes the animals which are adapted for both aquatic and terrestrial life. The most common example is Rana tigrina, that is frog. Let us study one by one the general morphological characters of the animals. As these animals comes under chordata, means the dorsal nervous system, ventral chambered heart, blood with corpuscles, post anal tail is persisting in larval life and some animals have prominent tail. The locomotory appendages are paired. As it comes in vertebrata, the spinal cord is protected by vertebrae forming vertebral column. There is a cranial bones around the brain. It is in group Grathostomata means the animals have jaws. It is in superclass tetrapoda as it has two pairs of limbs but they are unequal. Hence it is amphibian. Amphi means both. Bias the life. The organisms adapted for aquatic and terrestrial life. If you consider the body of the animal, it has head part. Neck is webbed, means there is no prominent neck, trunk and tail in some animals. Let us take example as frog and I will explain the characters one by one. Head of the frog if you see, it has paired nostrils at the anterior part. Behind that, paired eyes with immovable eyelids. Hence, eyeballs are protected by nictiating membrane. Paired internal ears called tympanum are found between the two eyes behind the nostrils. They receive sense of vibrations or sense of hearing. Wide jaws are present Lower jaw is without teeth. Upper jaw contain teeth and all teeth are similar. Hence, it is isodont in nature. If you see tongue or in frogs, it is protrusible because tip of the tongue is attached at the front position. So that base of the tongue they can protrude out. It is highly sticky to catch the insects which is the most favorite food in frogs. If you see the abdomen or trunk part of frog, it has two pairs of limbs. Four limbs are shorter, having four digits, so it is tetradactylus. Hind limbs are longer than the four limbs, having five digits, hence it is called pentadactylus. In larval life, we can see the tail which reduces and it is invisible in juvenile frogs. Internal systems like digestive system is well developed, three chambered heart, two auricles to receive the blood from lungs and from various parts of the body but ventricle is having only one chamber. So here oxygenated and deoxygenated blood will get mixed. Mixed blood is circulated throughout the body so when this blood circulates below skin skin is moist. Here, if you see the respiration that is exchange of gases, in larval life they have gills like fish. So it is a brachial respiration. When they attain terrestrial adaptation, the gills are closed, they develop lungs, so pulmonary respiration. But still, the skin devoid of scales which remain moist and sticky and slimy. This skin will help in gas gaseous exchange. So it is cutaneous respiration. I use three words. Brachial respiration. The organs for gaseous exchange are the gills. Pulmonary respiration. It is the lungs helping in gaseous exchange. Cutaneous respiration. Moist skin is helping in exchange of respiratory gases. So all the three types of respirations are prominent in the amphibians. The brain is well developed, 
the excretory system which includes paired kidneys ureters urethra now this urethra opens into a chamber called cloaca cloaca receives excreta that is urine from the kidney through bladder digestive waste is also released in the cloaca and the reproductive organs both in male and female they are well developed as frog is unisexual the male frog releases the sperm and the female frog releases the eggs in this cloaca so cloaca is a common chamber to receive the nitrogenous waste urine to receive digestive waste feces and receiving gametes so through cloacal aperture it is a common opening to release urine to release undigested waste and also to deposit the gametes that is sperm and the eggs when we see the breeding season in amphibians especially the frogs during breeding season we can easily differentiate between male and female males are very small and active females are grey with big with broad abdomen the belly portion ventral portion of the abdomen if you see it remains whitish in the female it becomes yellowish in the male there are special pink colored pads developed near the neck region which is webbed type these are called ocal cords which are absent in the female they are well developed in the males as they don't have the thumb region so there the thick pads will develop these are called nuptial pads which are present only in the males not in the females these are prominent features or sexual dimorphism between male and female frogs in the month of june when the monsoon starts the first rain where the water gets accumulated in the pond they don't like flowing water so in the stagnant water body the male frogs will gather and they start producing a typical sound vocal cords to attract the female frogs it is a vocal sound generated by vocal cords with different intensities the female frogs gets attracted towards this croaking sound they gather around the male frog so selection process goes on the male will select the gravid female for the amplex amplex this is the act where the male frog will mount on the female frog okay on the cross wise it will just hold the female's abdomen tightly using nuptial pads of the fore limbs and start pressing her abdomen so that female will feel easy to release the egg mass this process is known as spawning the act of the male frog to help the female for spawning is known as amplex The sperm is the egg mass released in the water, which contains more than 500 and odd eggs. Each egg is a spherical female gamete, protected by three jelly coats. These are called egg membranes. Hence, the animal is said to be oviparous. They deposit the eggs or they lay the eggs, but these are unfertilized. As the sperm started floating on the water surface, as the water is imbibed by the jelly coats. the male frog will mount on the spawn female frog will leave the spot the male frog sitting on the spawn which is floating on the water surface releases the sperms sperms are the male gametes after releasing the sperms even male frog will go now in the water it is after sunset all the activity starts so midnight time the fertilization takes place the sperm try to enter the jelly coats enter the egg and try to fertilize the egg the zygotes most of the time 80 to 90% of the eggs gets fertilized 2 to 3 days they are required for embryonic development which includes cleavage blastulation gastrulation followed by histogenesis organogenesis and on third fourth day sometimes depending upon the environmental conditions uh, uh, within a week time we can see the fish like small larvae start coming outside these are called tadpoles these tadpoles are exactly looking like a fish they 
are adapted for completely aquatic life. They have tail fin, they have gills, they have minute scales on the skin, eyes are protruded, eyeballs are covered by nictitating membranes, small mouth, jaws are not wide here. Okay, as they enjoy the aquatic life in the month of July, August. Okay, at the end of the September, when the water starts evaporating from the aquatic body, okay, they have to undergo metamorphosis. So, when they are enjoying the aquatic life, they develop the hind limbs, they start reducing the tail, they develop four limbs, they start closing the gills. Okay, thus, these all changes which occur, it is called metamorphosis. So, by the end of the September, a tiny frogs start coming out from the water body. These tiny frogs we call juvenile frogs. So they enjoy the terrestrial life for a month. November, December, January they can unable to bear the cold season. So they undergo a specific period of rest known as hibernation. In the month of January and February right? they start Unable to move because they are losing complete energy due to hibernation. It is called winter sleep. So, in the month of January or uh, the first two weeks of February, they sit at the particular place. They keep the tongue protruded out which is sticky and shiny. Poor insects are attracted towards the shiny surface and frog easily getting the nice non-vegetarian food in the form of varieties of insects. So, that digest the insects, they get nitrogenous. Uh, components from it okay they become energized but the February March and April these three months they are unable to bear the heat and again they undergo period of rest it is it is a summer sleep known as estivation so due to hibernation and estivation frog is nicely taking rest for almost six to seven months again May the rain fall starts okay the first rain activates the frogs wherever they are lying okay they start preparing for the process of reproduction and now they are getting ready for the next monsoon season to repeat the cycle this is how they enjoy the life no tension in the life only grow reproduce and sleep no exams no syllabus no tension no anxiety okay with this I'll just summarize the amphibians. They are aquatic and terrestrial. Body with head, trunk, with or without tail. Locomotory organs are paired on equal limbs. Jaws are wide. Upper jaw has teeth. Eyes are protruded, immovable eyelids. Eyeballs are covered by nictitating membrane. Nostrils are paired, tympanum is paired. Then the moist skin helping in respiration. All systems are well developed. The more specific is three chambered heart. So blood gets purified below the skin. Coming to the body temperature continuously changing. So we call them as poikilotherms or cold bellied animals. Unisexual with sexual dimorphism. Fertilization is external. Development is external. And it is indirect with the larval stage tadpole, right? Let me tell Western Ghats, okay, which we are near to this area, it is known for mega diversity of amphibians. Lots of amphibians are residing here, right? If you see these frogs, visit Chorla Ghat area, you can see variety of amphibians there. With this, I will conclude today's session on the class amphibia. Thank you.